that's the scary thing about insights. Uh, you look like Andrew Wiles working on the Fermat's last theorem is you don't know something seems like a good idea and you have that idea and it feels like this is a leap, like a, a totally new way to see it, but you have no idea if it's at all useful. Uh, even if you think it's correct, you have no idea if this is like going to go down a path that's completely counterproductive or not productive at all. That's the, that's the crappy thing about invention is... um like I have, I'm, I'm sure you do. I have, I have a lot of really good ideas every single day, but like, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go in, inside my head along them, along that little trajectory, but it could be just a total waste. And it's that I that you know what that feels like. It just feels like patience is required not to get excited at any one thing. So I think this is interesting because you you raised Andrew Biles. He spent seven years attacking the same thing, yeah. right? And and so I think that what attracts professional researchers to this is because even though it's very painful that you keep fighting with something, when you finally find the right insights and string them together, it feels really good. <laughs> so, Well, I, there's I, also like short-term, it feels good to, to uh, whether it's real or not, to pretend like you've solved something in the sense like you have an insight and there's a sense like this might be the insight that solves it. So uh, at least for me, I just enjoy that rush of positivity, even though I know statistically speaking, it's probably going to be a dead end. <laughs> I'm the same way, I'm the same way. In fact, that's how I know whether I might want to keep thinking about this general problem. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I still see that I'm getting some insights, I'm not at a dead end yet. Mm -hmm. But that's also where I learned something from my PhD advisor. Actually, he was a real big inspiration on my life. His name is Benny Sudakov. In fact, he grew up in the former Soviet Union. Uh, Excellent. He, he was from Georgia. Uh, but uh, he, he, he's an incredible person. But um, one thing I learned was choose the problems to work on that might matter if you, su if you succeed. Because that's why, for example, we dug into COVID. It was just, well... Suppose we succeed in finding some interesting insight here. Well, it actually matters. <laughs> then it's worthwhile. Yeah, and, and I think COVID, uh, the, the way you're approaching uh, COVID has two interesting possibilities. One, it might help with the COVID or another pandemic. But two, I mean, just this whole network theory space, you might unlock some deep understanding about the interaction of human beings that might have nothing to do with the pandemic. There's a, there's a space of possible impacts that may be direct or indirect. And the same thing is like with Andrew Wiles' proof. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, but apparently the pieces of it are really impactful for, for mathematics, even if the main yes. theorem is not. So along the way, the, the insights you have might be really powerful for unexpected reasons. So I like what you said. This is something that I learned from another friend of mine who's also, a, he's a very famous researcher. All these people are more famous than I am. <laughs> his, his name is Jacob Fox. He's Jacob Fox at Stanford, also a very big inspiration for me. We were both grad students together at the same time. Well, most importantly, you're good at selecting good friends. Ah, uh, yeah, well, that's, 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 that's the key. You can gotta find good people to learn things from. Yeah. But his thing was, he often said, you know, if you solve a math problem and have this math proof, math problem for him is like a, a proof, right? So suppose mm -hmm. you came up with this proof. He always asks, what have we learned from this that we could potentially use for something else? Mm -hmm. It's not just, did you solve the problem that was supposed to be famous? It was, and is there something new in the course of solving this that you had to invent that we could now use as a tool elsewhere? 